We're now joined by Dr. David Jones, Chief Diversity Officer at the New Jersey Institute of Technology, NGIT, one of our higher ed partners. Dr. Jones, uh, great to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. You got it. How would you describe your role in NGIT? Certainly. Uh, you know, my role, I serve as the diversity lead for the institution in providing uh, initiatives, programs, and developing policy that works to create an inclusive campus environment for our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students. You know, Dr. Jones, I'm curious about this. We'll talk about DE and I, DEI and, and where it's rhetoric and where it's real, where it's window dressing and when it's real. What about if someone says, you know what? This should just be natural. It should be organic. Or organizations should do it without having a chief diversity officer, without having a name of a program, but it doesn't. Right. Does it? <laughs> talk to us. Certainly. Uh, no, absolutely. You need the leadership in place. You need the infrastructure in place to be able to build out sustainable, right, culturally sustainable initiatives and programs that allow people, particularly people from underrepresented backgrounds, to feel a sense of belonging, to feel a, a place uh, that is affirming in their identities and their cultural beliefs and values within the organization. And so chief diversity officers uh, or diversity leads for organizations are critical to building out that type of infrastructure if we want to be able to sustain these efforts. And, and let's face it, right, we're, we're, we're looking at a society in which our, our cultural climate um, is, is faced with realities that disenfranchise people from underrepresented backgrounds. And so to build in this infrastructure, not only is it culturally responsive to what we're seeing in a society at large, um, but it builds in a, a, a culture that allows employees, uh, in organizations and students within higher education to thrive, particularly those that come from disen disenfranchised backgrounds. There are some folks who, who I've heard be critical of what they perceive the diversity, equity, and inclusion, what it really means, what it should mean, what you do and your colleagues do every day. And the response sounds like this. You know, I understand that we need to diversify, but, you know, sometimes we quote, we go too far. When I hear that, I often ask myself, well, aren't we playing catch up? Talk right. to us. Certainly, we are playing catch up. I mean, we're, we're, we're dealing with a society in which there, there's longstanding systemic and structural inequities and barriers um, that have uh, placed people of color, members of the LGBT community, women, persons with disabilities, right? And thinking about religious diversity, um, you know, at in ways in which they have been disenfranchised and marginalized for far too long. And including so, in the media. Inclu including in the media. And so we need to be able to factor in particular initiatives and leadership in place that is responsive to what we're seeing every day in our society. Um, and so, you know, these type of roles, the role that I'm serving in is a very critical role. It supports the president and his mission. Uh, it upholds the values and, 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 and cultural um, beliefs and core values of the institution, and it, it places us on a path toward success um, and employee engagement and student engagement that I think is really critical for higher education. Let's talk more specifically, um, by the way, talking to Dr. David Jones, Chief Diverse, Diversity Officer at NGIT. So, uh, name a specific initiative that you and your colleagues are involved in that, in fact, work toward diversifying the culture and the workforce and the environment in NJIT, which is, which can be replicated and is being replicated, I'm sure, in other places, other institutions of higher learning, please. Certainly. And so we have just put uh, in place a university-wide committee on inclusive excellence. And this committee is going to be a body of faculty, staff, students, and alumni to serve um, in partnership with me to address key priorities that are happening at the university level. Um, to ensure that our students and our faculty and staff, particularly those from diverse backgrounds, are feeling supported and affirmed uh, within their identities and cultural beliefs here while they're at NJIT. And so this committee is going to be a representation of the university uh, across all disciplines and, and, and aspects of cultural, cultural life here at the university to ensure um, we are making, uh, to ensure we are being responsive to all of our uh, constituent groups. Quick question, when it comes to faculty, right? Recruiting faculty members, hiring faculty members, and making the faculty, frankly, more diverse. 
historically disproportionately represented by um, white males, okay? How challenging is it, Dr. Jones, to actually recruit d a diverse faculty workforce that A, wants to be in higher education in these challenging times, right? Not getting super rich doing that, but also qualified to do it. Talk about that. Not easy. It's, it's, it's not easy, but I think, you know, one of the things that I think makes it achievable is if you build in the infrastructure, right? If you build what in- What does that mean? What does that mean so building in for example, So for example, you know, we're looking at um, building out training and learning and development opportunities so that our faculty and staff can have the diverse equity inclusion capacity, right? To be able to engage with people across difference where we can build in um, a collection of understanding and awareness around our differences and allow our differences to bring us together, not necessarily divide us, right? Um, and so one of the things that I'm, I'm working on currently is um, a partnership with our of the office of our provost is that we're going to have a two-day um, professional learning experience for our faculty and staff and where they are going to engage in understanding how to identify, confront unconscious bias in the classroom and out of the classroom. So building out that capacity among our faculty and staff is critical to ensuring we're creating the type of workplace environment that is inclusive for those that we recruit. Last question. Where'd you grow up? I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. So that's where my roots begin. Um, and then I, uh, later in life during um, my adolescent years, moved to Hartford, Connecticut, the greater Hartford, Connecticut area and lived in Windsor, Connecticut. So you lived in Hartford. Unique no, I lived, in Windsor, I lived in Windsor, Connecticut, the greater oh, Hartford. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Where and how you were raised, significant impact on the work you do? Absolutely. I would say, you know, coming from Brooklyn, New York, and then moving to a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, um, my experiences, particularly around my racial identity, hugely impacted the, my, my life growing up. How so? You were one of only a few African-American families? Sure. Yeah, we were only one of a few African-American families on the, in the neighborhood that we lived in. Um, I attended schools where I was one of few Black males um, in my class. And so the sense of onlyness, right, in, in the educational space impacted my uh, racial identity development and in ways in which that I think have propelled me to this career where I can now be in the position to help individuals, faculty, staff, and students that might be navigating their own identity, right, in these workplace environments in higher education to help them overcome those challenges and, and not necessarily have to navigate some of the hurdles in the diversity that I had to overcome. Not just professional, but highly personal for you. Absolutely. This is, this is, this is my personal work. This is something that I, I carry out each and every single day. And, and I'm committed to this work, um, not just in my role at NJIT, but in the various other ways in which I show up in my community and various other spaces across the country. Your passion is clear. Dr. David Jones, Chief Diversity Officer, NJIT. Dr. Jones, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You got it. Same for us. Be right back. I am alive today thanks to my kidney donor. I am traveling and more active than ever before. I'm alive today thanks to my heart donor. I'm full of energy and back singing in my church choir. I'm alive today thanks to my lung donor. I'm breathing easy and I'm enjoying life's precious moments. There are about 4,000 people in the years who are waiting for a life-saving transplant. Donation needs diversity. For more information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit njsharingnetwork.org. Also brought to you by Holy Name. This place is different. New Jersey Sharing Network. The New Jersey Education Association. Prudential Financial. PSC, where your story is our business. The Russell Berry Foundation, making a difference. Veolia, resourcing the world. NJM Insurance Group, serving New Jersey's drivers, homeowners, and business owners for more than 100 years. And by Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, 